flow. Well, it's the end of the year, and I uh, <clears throat> wanted to do one more, you know, update <clears throat> of the various uh, movies I've gotten since the very last time I uh, made a video, which I believe was back in August, if I recall correctly. Um, but beforehand, I want to also say how um, next year I want to take actually more breaks. I know earlier... Uh, either this year or at the very end of last year, like a year ago, I mentioned that, but I really want to do that more. Um, so for videos, I still want to keep putting them out every month, but maybe not as many, just, you know, when it seems like uh, when it seems right to do, um, that way I can have more room to do other things because it seems like I want you know I want to do other things too for this channel so and um maybe I'll do that next year I don't know I don't want to make any promises so uh, that is the um that's just gonna be how it is really <laughs> just for me to, to say that just I'm gonna uh, do my absolute best to uh, have more variety on my channel. I don't want to make any guarantees, but I'm going to make an effort. So I'm going to take more breaks. Maybe every other week or so I'll have videos. But if I do do a franchise um, discussion, then they'll probably be more frequent throughout a month. But uh, to get started with... Um, the uh, the various movies I've gotten since, which from here to there, it's quite a bit, but I also want to start off with a film I, I already mentioned before, but I have actually gotten again, because, you know, this time the case is not broken. I still have that broken one up there, but I'll figure out what to do with that, because the discs are good, it's just everything else is kind of meh. So yeah, I have an alternate to cover because or the I flipped it around. So yeah, all that's good. The poster and stuff are inside are fine. So Yeah, here's the poster. It is not ripped for, you know, Hugo. Um, so yeah, after a while, uh, uh, Arrow did send this, it just took a while, and I think probably because I believe this is the very first time they've ever had a Scorsese film, so it might have been overwhelming in terms of how many people have ordered this. And uh, This is the little booklet or whatever that has all the cast and crew and all that. And, uh, this is a pretty good film. Uh, everybody involved is very good um, uh, discs still work so that's good um, and uh, because why not um, show you my original uh, Blu-ray and DVD. And this is a 
all the special features on here are on this so uh, it's always nice when uh you know newer stuff like this actually imports all the special features from previous um a previous release sometimes they don't do that they just have it, it just exclusive stuff which sometimes may cover all the similar uh contents on the old releases but you know yeah not always and sometimes it's due to certain copyright reasons as to why uh, they don't have they do not at all have the old some of the old stuff like uh, Raging Bull or by the Criterion one there's like some stuff with the fighting footage that they had that you know they they don't they couldn't get the rights to so uh, the other Blu-ray I have has, I, I'm just keeping that also just for essentially have all the same stuff and you know for that version there's new stuff but yeah Arrow was able to have all the old stuff uh, with it so that's good and some other stuff that I talked about recently you know Jaws 2 just talked about that excellent movie uh, Creed 3 Uh, Main Streets and I believe there's another movie there I just kind of put that all at least a couple that are just sort of like just uh, I don't know at least the ones that are very most recent I talked about but I'm pretty sure there's another one they have a <laughs> that I could uh, mention. So yeah, there's some Arrow and some uh, Criterion stuff that I've gotten. This one, I uh, I already talked about for the film, but this, this year they have a, they came out with a physical copy of Prey. Um, wasn't able to get the Steelbook because that was all out, but I will get to Steelbooks in a moment. But yeah, this is an excellent uh, 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 transfer for 4K and Blu-ray. It's excellent all the way around. I uh, definitely recommend getting this if you haven't uh, um, if you haven't bought this yet or even seen it at all. I think you could, it'd be good. You could get this fairly inexpensive uh, at this point, at least for Blu-ray. It is on Blu-ray and I think DVD also, but you know I got the 4K and 4K Blu-ray and Blu-ray combo thing together. So I am completely happy that they decided to actually release this on physical media because beforehand the word was essentially it's just going to be a Hulu exclusive. Like there was no plans to ever release this at all on blu-ray or anything so i'm like well that sucks I do have hulu but still but you know if i wanted to watch it then some ha something happened and power or the internet goes out for some reason you know sometimes it happens for whatever reason internet goes wonky uh, and it's either out all together, got to call the internet company to see what's going on, or sometimes it just gets weak. Sometimes it could depend on the area you live in. Um, I live in the city, so that won't be a major problem, but still. Excellent uh, Blu-ray and 4K, and yeah, ABC, so region-free in the Blu-ray, which is nice. I also recently got this, Sound of Freedom, and uh, that was quite good. Um, I know there's some controversy of some of the stuff that some of the people, you know, either said or like they believe or whatever. 
as a film overall, this was just excellent. It was really, really well done. Um, sad because of, you know, the content of, you know, sex trafficking and all that for what kids and just in general sex trafficking is horrible um but this is a very good there's no special features so you know for some people who might have wanted to see some behind the scenes stuff or like jim caviezel and the director writer producer um or the real Tim Ballard, you know, talk about the making of this film. You'd be a bit disappointed. You'd have to go online to see interviews like that. But, uh, yeah, as a film, it's very well done. Again, I know people <laughs> are going to be like, no, no, this isn't good because of this or that reason with this organization of Underground Railroad that uh, Tim Ballard uh, created as well as Certain comments that were said by, uh, like, Jim Caviezel or, and Tim Ballard, I don't know. It's just like, it seemed like with some of the controversy with this film, it seemed to be more directly that some of the people be, like, an actor or the real guy himself or the organization. Not necessarily the contents of the exact film. Like, it's a very well made movie it's competent you know it says based on a true story so liberty's taken yeah likely they combined certain things just to probably give a good cohesive story so it's not years and years but you know that happens so as a result i'm not going to be too hard on the film um in that regard because so many movies do that you know we're uh, you know, people will absolutely talk about some of the stuff of uh, <clears throat> accuracy and inaccuracy and all that stuff. So that way people can try to figure out or see exactly what is and isn't uh, based off of reality from the actual events. So, yeah. There you go. Fine film. Um, another film that I didn't see at all until recently was uh, Air, and I saw this uh, Target, and same price on Amazon, about $20, and uh, again, this is a film with no special features, unfortunately, but, you know, this is the story of uh, how... Uh, Nike is trying to get uh, Michael Jordan to be uh, to be sponsored by them, and what goes on into getting the deal made, uh, so that way you know Air Jordan will be uh, you know Air Jordan will just be. And a thing as opposed to other competing uh, shoe companies who have more money to market. And now at this point in time in the 80s, Nike wasn't as popular anymore. You know, you got like Adidas and for instance, because at that time, you know, Run DMC was huge and they have Adidas shoes and like wearing, you know, the jackets and everything and the suits and stuff just is just you know this is just a really well made film um stars obviously matt damon and also ben affleck who also directed this film also he and matt damon produced it so uh that's a it's really a <laughs> it's really all to say at this time. Um, Jason Bateman, Marlon Wayans, Chris Messina, uh, 
Chris Tucker, Viola Davis. Everybody involved in this film did an excellent job. Um, I recommend it. You know, it wasn't terribly expensive, so shouldn't be terribly expensive if you get it on Amazon or if you're able to find this in a store like Walmart and stuff. Because I know Target is has really scaled back on their Blu-rays selection. And after this year, there's not going to be any more Blu-rays, 4K Blu-rays, DVDs, all that stuff. Like any physical media will be gone entirely from uh, Best Buy. You know, uh, or at least physical medium, movie form. I, I, I think that also would go for video games. But I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, they might keep video games around in the systems just because that's something that they would sell. But, yeah. It's unfortunate that uh, all that kind of is going on, but... That is, in a way, the world we live in, unfortunately. Um, these next two films, uh, Death on the Nile and A Haunting of Venice. I have talked about each of these films before, so I don't really need to talk to it again. But I never I, I never got this film. I don't know why. You know, I would have gotten it right after, you know, it was out on Blu-ray or like 4K Blu-ray, but... I didn't for some reason when it came out, and, um, yeah. Got this Blu-ray, just to be kind of, you know, g consistent. Um, but yeah, this also doesn't have, like, one of those slip cover things, so. As I mentioned in the, uh, Creed thing, like, if I really want one, I'll probably just get somebody who makes these and sell these. Make it, like, a custom one. Make it Maybe like this, or possibly even better than this cover. Something else. Maybe there's another poster that they can use. So, who knows? That's only if I really <laughs> want one that bad. And some people, you know, they, uh, you know, they could be very reasonable, or in some cases, they could be kind of fairly pricey. I guess it just depends on the material, though, for the most part. It's. Pretty fine, sort of standard stuff, but yeah. I know not a lot of people are kind of very mixed, to say the least, about the Kenneth Brenna, Hercule Her Poirot. Um, but I enjoy them for what they were. Better than some of the other adaptations, perhaps not. Um, again, it's been a, quite some time since I saw the Al Finney version, so... I can't really say whether that's truly better than Kenneth Brenna's, though I will say I saw the Kenneth Brenna one, and I saw all these in the theater, so that could perhaps make me kind of biased to some extent, but yeah. Also, so many of these are region-free Blu-rays, so that's cool. I went somewhere around the world and decided to take these, you know, I could watch them. Plus there is digital, but digital isn't forever. You're just basically renting it for however long that the company decides, yeah, you can have that. Um, got this uh, Alfred Hitchcock's 4K set. There's other uh, sets that they have. I think this is like the third one. I believe. This one has Rope, The Man Who Knew Too Much, so two of, of the four James Stewart films. I believe the first one had the other two, uh, Rear Window and uh, Vertigo, so this has his first two collaborations with Hitchcock, and the first one had the last two. Probably because those are the more <clears throat> beloved and talked about. But aside from those two, it has a Torn Curtain with Paul Newman, and Julie Andrews, Topaz with uh, Frederick Stanford and John Forsyth. Yeah, For Frederick Stanford and 
John Forrest life and uh, Frenzy with uh, John Finch and Barry Foster. So uh, it's one of these where it kind of opens up like that and uh, yeah, rope. So yeah, that's it. Was it also it was it overtly expensive? I think this was like forty bucks. So yeah, and I uh, got it from uh, Groove dot com, which is a site I have been getting become very very uh, more and more fond of. So that's a good site to get some Blu-rays and all that. So. Now I've got some steel books. Um, uh, first one is uh, Venom. Uh, there let let there be carnage. The 4K and the normal Blu-ray. Saw this in the theater, and uh, I enjoyed it. I like the Venom films. I know some people aren't the biggest fans, but this is a good film overall. I think. Better than the first one, I don't know, but hey, it's uh, <laughs> it's entertaining to say the least. So that's a good thing, and uh, dual, four uh, K and the uh, Blu Ray. Um, on the four K uh, disc, there is um, the TV version, so. That's pretty cool. The 75 minute version uh, is here, but only on the 4K disc. Um, Spielberg's first film. Um, and this is a Gro Groove exclusive, so this was only a Groove. This was from Walmart. They still had these, so. But yeah. Basically, the. Same as the front, just more, you know, cl just close up. And, uh, yeah. Show you the inside, which is also similar, but hey. Tom Hardy is really cool. It is really good as Venom. Um, sort of surprised he decided to do more, you know, superhero comic book films, whatever you want to say. But he's doing a good job as Eddie Brock. So hey, that's a that's a good thing at least. I like how some of these actually have pretty good disc art. Sometimes the disc art is pretty bleh. I've commented on that before, but still. Yeah, truck going after Dennis Weaver. And, uh, trying to kill him. And, uh, I'll probably talk about this at some point. It's a excellent film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it is absolutely worth watching. So, yeah. That here, and uh, these next two. I'll, uh, are from Best Buy and they're steel books and they are films I've already talked about this year 
Um, first is Scarface, which has this kind of thing, and it's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure I showed this version. And uh, American Graffiti, which I saw on the big screen this year for its 50th anniversary, and uh, yeah. I know there are people who, you know, the, for the 4K version, the, the disc, it wasn't that great, the quality. Um, I don't have a whole lot of complaint, you know. It wasn't horrid or anything, was it? Were there other 4K uh, discs this year that looked better? Sure, but I don't know. I didn't hate it. So... There's that. Um, yeah, these two are the final uh, movies I got from Best Buy. So yeah, they've announced how they're not going to have any more Blu-rays or DVDs. 4K Blu-rays, so... That's unfortunate, but yeah. At least I got two uh, excellent films <laughs> beforehand, and also like the last Steel Books from there I did get too. So yeah, you know I'm not, I'm not somebody who always has to get Steel Books, but you know uh, Best Buy would have. Pretty good steel books. These are excellent. These look awesome. All the contents on here, aside from the films, are great too. But I will say for the uh, 4K version, the commentary is just, you know, just that, just commentary. Whereas on the Blu ray disc, it's actually, you know, like a picture in picture uh, uh, kind of commentary as opposed to. Just extracting the audio from that, you know. You know, I don't know why they didn't do that for that, you know. Because every so often, George Lucas would pop up <laughs> in, like, the little corner <laughs> as the movie's going on. And so you'd see him as he speaks over the film. But, I don't know, they didn't do that for the 4K discs. So, not sure if there was any particular reason. But, yeah, there you go. Oh. And here, are, here is a film I got this year that I talked about. I Bloody Valentine for 4K. And, uh, yeah. I already talked about this, so I don't need to delve more into that. Uh, great release. I really like it. Can't really complain. Um, I guess I could, but I don't know why I would, but... And Clue. I got Clue because, not only do I love Clue, but I never got it on Blu-ray. And the Shout Factory version has special features, which has never been done before. The only thing that has ever happened were the three surprise endings. 
as well as the trailer. But yeah, on the Blu-ray disc, you have uh, uh, interviews with the uh, direct writer, director, as well as the associate producer, and uh, uh, com with film music historian Daniel Schweger about John Morris's score. Very cool. Unfortunate they didn't get any of the uh, actors or actresses that are still alive. Um, I know Tim Curry had a stroke years ago, and so he hasn't really done too much. But it would be cool, kind of cool if they were able to interview him a bit. Michael McKeon, uh, Christopher Lloyd, and Martin Mull are definitely still around. I think Leslie Ann Warren is too. I know... Uh, I mean, Brennan and um, Madeline Kahn are no longer with us, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, this is a hilarious film. If you've seen it, you know why. But yeah, this is just excellent. This is phenomenal. I've loved this ever since I was a kid. I saw it on VHS, like late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, like my grandparents saw it. Uh, they added, and uh, I just loved it. And I got it on DVD, and I have the Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray. So I uh, <laughs> this is a great, great film. You know, great Who Done It? <laughs> Put that there, and uh, so um. This is a film that, now here's my old uh, <laughs> Blu-ray that I'm going to give this to my mother. Um, one thing I really liked with this particular version is you get the, uh, which is the limited edition of Touch of Evil, which has the 58-page uh, Orson Welles notes that uh, essentially gave about the You know, how, uh, about the, about all the changes and what should, how the film should be, because there's some tampering going on with the film, and, uh, yeah. So, now the reason I'm going to give this to my mother is because not only has she seen it and enjoyed it, also Dennis Weaver is in this film, um, Part of the reason he was cast in um, Duel, because Spielberg's like, oh, I really loved him in that small part in this film. Um, but the reason I'm going to, uh, I'm essentially replacing this is because they got the 4K Blu-ray version of uh, Touch of Evil. It has all the same stuff, plus uh some new things with people talking about it. And um, there's film. Discs. And yeah, this is from Eureka. And I have never gotten anything from them before. So cause a lot of that stuff is just, you know, uh, region B, so, yeah, couldn't really, uh, play it here with, unless without getting, you know, either a region free player or actually even possibly hacking up one of my playstations, but even then, I don't know if I'd want to do that, because knowing me, I'd probably do it wrong, and then I couldn't play anything ever again on, I mean, so that would be kind of like a real... <laughs> Well, pointless thing for me, because I just know my luck, and that's what would happen. You know, do it correctly, and I would do it correctly just how they do it, but, yeah. And just a blue background, but... And this has a 100-page book, which also has the universal memo, the memo to the studio, um... 
but because of the kind of font and everything. The entire thing is able to be put on less than uh, 58 pages, so that's cool. Has some interview, has some people talking about it. Um, Ribbon of Dreams by Orson Welles. Orson Welles on Touch of Evil. And, uh, Charlton Heston and Janet Lee and Vector uh, is no. Cop uh, Hank Queenan is played by Wells. <laughs> This is a film I'll probably talk about at some point. Um, rated 12 by the BBFC and PG-13 by the MPAA, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, for the theatrical, well, for the reconstructed cut, it is, but not rated for the theatrical and preview versions, so, yeah. So yeah, excellent film that I'll probably talk about at some point. All right, and uh, another Orson Welles film, which he also is in, but stars uh, uh, Anthony Perkins, The Trial. This was quite a movie, I'll just, uh, yeah. A, a very unique and interesting film. Um, the extras on this are fantastic. It's um, really cool to see uh, the making of the film as well as Orson Welles, you know, just talking about this in general. And um, yeah, this is a, Fantastic film. Uh, not more, <laughs> I, much else I can really say. Just fantastic. And, um, yeah. And I have some Arrow films. Three. Um, Carlito's Way, which I mentioned in a live stream I watched. Turned 30 years old this year. Turned 30. Yeah. Not basically right not long after he won his Academy Award, he uh, worked with Brian De Palma again ten years after Scutterface. And uh really excellent film. Um You know, if he uh won the Oscar for this, um, you know, because a lot of people are kind of, were kind of up, up, especially in retrospect, kind of like, meh, that he won for Scent of a Woman, which is not a bad film, but when you look at all the films he was nominated, uh, as well as some of the films he wasn't nominated uh, for an Oscar, yeah, uh, it's a bit of a disappointment, you know, in that a film that is good and he's gives a fine performance, but it was clear there's better people nominated. So yeah, and here's the alternative cover on the other side. So yeah. Yep. 
the other film I mentioned in that live stream that I also saw was, um, so I'm pretty sure I did, was a uh, Witness starring Harrison Ford. And I, I really do like Harrison Ford. And you know, that was the 4K and Blu ray combo. And this and the other film is, is just uh, Blu ray. Um, I enjoy this film as well as the other film, but you know, all the same stuff of extras, like all this in the poster, you know, that's available. So I think for Arrow, unless it's something overtly special and amazing, that's like, I got to have that for 4K only. I'll probably go for the Blu-ray or if there's a combo of both of them, I'll probably get that, but here's the alternate cover. And, uh, this is a, a film where uh, Harrison Ford um, got his only Academy Award nomination for this film. You know, playing a <clears throat> uh, uh, a, a detective, yeah. I have a brain fart and I'm looking exactly at what it says. You know, he's a detective. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how F Harrison Ford has been nominated only for one Academy Award. Um, he didn't win it, obviously, but he did a very good job. And uh, it's directed by Peter Weir, who he uh, would later direct uh, films like uh, The Truman Show. And um, Masters and Commanders, which is uh, a very good film with Russell Crowe. Um, Truman Show obviously stars Jim Carrey, but you know, Peter Weir also made a Picnic at Hanging Rock, which I saw. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, not a bad film, per se, but I'm just, it just wasn't like my cup of tea, essentially. That's just, that's the best way to describe, like, uh, I could see myself watching it again, because I saw it once before, some years ago. Wasn't the biggest fan, but, I don't know. Uh, I think enough time has gone on where if I watched it again, uh, my taste might have changed, or my thought on it might change a bit. I'm, I'm absolutely willing to give it another shot. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently Harrison Ford, uh, you know, for this is a Scarface for Pacino, what he was best known for, which I can definitely see that. If it's not Godfather, it's Scarface. But for him, you know, Harrison Ford, he's best known for The Fugitive, because that is absolutely what I always think of. It's not uh, Han Solo. Not Indiana Jones, but it's the fugitive, you know. I guess the correlation is, uh, you know, you know, and this he's a cop, and then fugitive he's being chased by the cops. I don't know, but it's an interesting uh, film for them to uh, pick as what he he is best known for. Um, and this other era release is uh, The Warriors, also for Blu-ray. And um, I kind of like this. You know, usually it's like that. But here, not that I don't like dislike this, but, you know, black. <laughs> you know. Is there anything, was there anything on the back for Carlito's Way? No, just black and universal over there. Paramount logo isn't even on the back of that, so okay. But I really like this, and I don't know if this was just for that, because sometimes there are some things on the back that's kind of cool, but if this is how they're going to do it from now on, I think this would be cool. Uh, the Warriors... Which is a, yeah, in short, it's about uh, a New York gang, 
and they uh, the warriors are accused of killing uh, the leader of a the like the biggest and like most respected uh, gang in New York, and uh, they gotta try to get back uh, to uh, Coney Island where they're from. Uh, yeah, this has the theatrical cut and the 2005, as it says here, alternate or alternative version, or uh, uh, the director's cut, as it once was called. And um, I know there are some people who aren't too fond of the director's cut, just because, in from what I saw, because I had never seen it before, I've only seen the theatrical cut, and basically it just has a, a an opening like an intro before and as like a narration um, spoken by Walter Hill, the director, who also co-wrote the film. Um, originally you wanted uh, Orson Welles, but the studio wasn't going to uh, shell out more money just so Orson Welles could give basically one minute or so of narration, which and he would never be shown in the film. You'd just be there for the narration, and that would be it. Um, and, uh, yeah, the special features are also really good, but... So... Yeah, we got the subway here. You know, the warriors. The passengers are forbidden to right outside door it says the same on the back but you know there's the other gangs ready to you know beat up and potentially kill the warriors I might talk about this movie next year because this came out uh, 79 and this film will be you know 45 years old so here's the original poster it's basically her I'm sure that's <laughs> kind of obvious to like yeah no the and i do like the for like the book how it's a a new york subway guide that way you can get around the city and get back to wherever you need to or go to wherever you need to be like coney island or whatever Uh, this is an absolutely a uh, absolutely a cult classic. Uh, uh, fantastic movie, um, and that's all I'll say about it for now. And uh, the last movie I got, which also with this film as well as the Hugo Arrow. I had an update of what I got, but for this one, I also made a <laughs> video about it. Or, not a video, a post. Uh, Oppenheimer. And it's really awesome to see this in 4K. It may not have uh, been as immersive at home like at, in the theater and the IMAX also. I saw it on IMAX, so... You know, it's still amazing. Uh, did an excellent job, and this open it up careful like that, and uh, there you go.
Killian Murphy and Rubber Downey Jr. Um, they are getting a lot of accolades in terms of, you know, critics giving them awards as well as, like, the uh, Golden Globes and Critics' Choice Awards. Robert Downey Jr. absolutely seems to be a favorite to win supporting actor. Kelly Murphy, also for, like, best actor. Um, and here's the discs. They're not the easiest to get out, which is both good and... Here, I'll just showcase the 4K one because uh, they don't all look the same. But yeah, this is the Walmart exclusive because the Best Buy Steelbook was sold out. Like as soon as it was announced, all that all those were gone. Um, but uh, not too long after. So Walmart had a uh, an exclusive, and I'm like, that just looks awesome. Because all the special features are the same, but, you know, sometimes certain stores will have exclusives. And uh, because, you know, there's going to be no more Blu-rays and all that with that... Um, at Best Buy, and... You know, there's talk that similar, something similar will happen at Target, and they have absolutely a skill back a lot. <laughs> I mean, for a while there wasn't much at Target for Blu-rays, but now it's even less. So it's like, yeah, okay. It looks like they will uh, be getting rid of all those. So they might keep games and stuff like that. So there you go. But yeah, this is awesome. The making of the film is fantastic. Yeah. Great, great, great film. And uh, it deserves any and all accolades it gets. Uh, nominated for and wins. I think Best Picture and Director seems to be very uh, much for in the it looks to be very much like Christopher Nolan's turn and you know it's one of those where if he wins for this it's absolutely deserved it's not one of those where it's like a Pacino where it's like eh, eh. though I have heard about uh Bradley Cooper winning for Maestro and then people are like you know it's not really his best performance but like it's a very Oscar baby film and so <clears throat> yeah Sometimes that happens. It's unfortunate, but what are you going to do? I mean, complain? I guess you could, but, you know, not much will happen. But I guess we'll see if Oppenheimer is able to receive a whole bunch of awards and if can win top prizes or if he'll just get some behind-the-scenes stuff like... Uh, music and cinematography and um not visual effects because it's not nominated because i guess <clears throat> i guess at this point in time visual effects but from at least what a lot of people are talking about as to why it's not nominated is because you know it's like you know cgi seems to be what people think of visual effects as well as the fact that people don't uh, exactly associate uh, Oppenheimer with uh, a, a lot of effects, which is very fair, but there are a good amount of effects in the film, like in the explosion of the, you know, the recreation of the atomic bomb going off. I don't know, at least I think that alone should have uh, get it, got a nomination at the very least, but, you know, Whatever, what do I know? Um, yeah. That's it. Uh, uh, almost an hour, but I kind of expected that. 
Plus, I had that little bit at the beginning, so... Yeah, hopefully I... Uh, hopefully this was interesting. Um, some of these films I'll probably talk about at some point in the next year. Um, but yeah, I have... Uh, I have enjoyed all these films, so... If anything, I just wanted to show what I got, as I've done before. Hope this was interesting, and if it wasn't, I apologize. But anyway, um, I hope you've had a great year. Hope your weekend has also been gr uh, great, and I hope all of you will not only just have a great week, but I hope you'll have a great year. So, until next time, next week really, because, you know, in the past I've kind of uh, taken a break basically for making videos like this, like of this series, <laughs> for the first week of January. So, I'll probably keep up with that tradition uh, this year, but yeah. I hope uh, all of you are doing well. Happy New Year again. And uh, take care. I'll see you all next time. Bye and greetings and whatever. Hopefully next year I'll actually remember to say greetings more. Something I wanted to try to do for a while, but yeah. Old habits die hard, so yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Goodbye, uh, for real this time.